Hey guys, this is the third video in our three-part series for our notes for Unit 3. So for Part 3, we're going to be talking about periodic families. I would go ahead and put this video and the keynote with your notes in it split screen so you can see both at the same time. So we're going to start talking about the different families of the periodic table. And if you remember from the last video, your families are your vertical columns. Okay? Your vertical columns. So there are five main families that I want you to know. We've got hydrogen, the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals, halogens, and noble gases. There are other families on the periodic table, but these are the big five that you're going to see the most often. So these are the ones I want you to know. Okay? So we're going to start with hydrogen. If we look on our periodic table, hydrogen's up here on the top left. So hydrogen has an atomic number of one. That means it has one proton, one electron. It is the lightest element. And if you'll notice, there's stuff below it. But what we actually say is that hydrogen is in its own group. So I'm going to outline hydrogen. Hydrogen is its own group. So some properties of hydrogen that we want to talk about. We're going to start off by saying it's in its own group. And you said, you heard me say that hydrogen has one proton and one electron. So that one electron is its valence electron. So it has one valence electron. And one thing that we know about elements with only one valence electron, and this will be true for hydrogen and for the alkali metals, is that they're very reactive. They love to bond with other elements. So we're going to write very reactive. Okay? Very reactive. And then one more thing about hydrogen, it is the most common element in the entire universe. So most common element in the universe. Okay, so hydrogen, its own group, one valence electron, very reactive, most common element in the universe. So our second group that we're going to talk about are the alkali metals. So I said there was stuff below hydrogen, so everything below hydrogen, not including hydrogen, everything below it, is the alkali metals. So starting with lithium, number three, we've got sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Everything in there is an alkali metal. So a couple things I want you to know about the alkali metals. They are group one on the periodic table. So if you look at the top of that group, it'll say one above it. Group one. And like I said before, it's got one valence electron. And they are also very reactive. Okay? So group one, one valence electron. It loves to bond with other stuff to try and get rid of that valence electron. And it's very reactive. One other thing that's good to know about alkali metals is that they are very reactive with water. If you take a big block of something like potassium and drop it in water, it will start creating sparks and heat. It might explode. So we're going to write that down as well. Explodes in water. And that's part of what we say, part of what we mean when we say that something is very reactive, is that sometimes you get those kind of violent reactions. Okay, next group that we're talking about is the alkaline earth metals. So the alkaline earth metals are group two. So we're going to go ahead and fill those in. Alkaline earth metals are group two, right there at the top. So everything in this column starting with beryllium, is group two. So we've got beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. And no, you don't have to memorize those. OK? 
Okay, so if it's group two, I want you to take a second and guess how many valence electrons do you think we're going to have? Hopefully you guessed two. So group two has two valence electrons. Okay, group two has two valence electrons. A couple of things about the alkaline earth metals, they are usually very common elements, things like calcium you see out in the world a lot. So we're going to say that they're very common, they're easy to find, and they're very important for living things. Things like calcium, magnesium, um, even strontium is important for your body to continue functioning. So very important for living things. Okay, so finish writing that down. Our next family is going to be the halogens. So if we look at our periodic table, we're going to skip all of these guys right here. You see how the periodic table drops down a little bit? All of these guys in here, including these guys down here, are called your transition metals. We're not going to talk about those in this class. If you go on to take chemistry at a higher level, you'll talk about these, but we're going to skip them for now. And we're going to jump all the way over to group 17 over here. Okay? So our group 17 elements are called the halogens. So group 17 is all of these guys right here, and on this table it tells you these are the halogens. So just past that line, this black line shows me where my metalloids are. So this is the dividing line between the metals over here and the non-metals over here. And everything that touches that line is a metalloid. So over here in the halogens, we've got all non-metals, starting with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, um, astatine, and tennessine, named after Tennessee. So the halogens are group 17, so take a second to guess how many valence electrons do you think group 17 is going to have? So hopefully you said seven valence electrons. So remember, we're trying to get to eight. We're trying to get that full shell of eight. So if an element has seven valence electrons, it's really close. So these elements are also very reactive. They really want to get to eight. They're so close. So one more time, very reactive. It's one of the reasons we see these guys so much, is they love to bond with other things. All of the elements in group 17 are usually found as gases. Sometimes iodine is found in liquid form, but usually they're gases. And one of the things that we notice about the halogens, group 17, seven valence electrons, is that they love to bond with the alkali metals. Okay, why do you think that is? So take a second to write down your thoughts. Why do you think that the halogens love to bond with the alkali metals? So one of the ways we can answer that is we can look at the number of valence electrons that the halogens have and the number of valence electrons that the alkali metals have. And I said that we're trying to get to eight, right? We're trying to get to eight valence electrons total. So what you can do if you have a halogen and an alkali metal is that that alkali metal can give up its valence electron to the halogen and it drops down to its full shell and it's happy. And the halogen gets bumped up to eight valence electrons. It has a full shell and it's happy. So if a halogen bonds with an alkali metal, both get full valence shells. So we're trying to max out our number of valence electrons. We're trying to get to eight. So this way, if they bond together, they can both get to eight valence electrons, and they're both happy.
All right. Last family we're talking about is the noble gases. So these guys are found on the far right of our table, group 18, over here. Starting with helium, going all the way down to 118, newly discovered at the bottom. So everything in this tall column right here. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and I'm not even going to try and say that last one. Okay, so group 18 is our noble gases. I'm going to write that down, group 18. And if you remember, if you've watched that video we did in class already about Mendeleev, one of the reasons they had trouble finding the noble gases at first is because they don't like to bond with anything. So if we look at group 18, if we're following our pattern for valence electrons, group 18 has eight valence electrons. And if you think about that, if it already has eight valence electrons, and eight is the perfect number of valence electrons to have if you're an atom, why would it want to bond with anything? It doesn't want to give any away. It doesn't want to take any more. So the noble gases don't like to bond because they've already got a full shell of valence electrons. So what we're going to put here is that they don't form bonds with other atoms. And the reason why is that they already have a full shell. They already have eight. Of valence electrons. So go ahead and finish your notes. Um, repeat this video if you need to. If you have any questions, come see me in person or write me an email. Make sure that you know the group numbers and the names for all the families. Make sure you know the number of valence electrons. And see if you can start quizzing yourself on some of these other properties that they have. So reacting with water, um, very commonly found on in the earth. So that's why they're called alkaline earth metals. They're easy to mine for. Um, halogens love to bond with alkali metals. See if you can start quizzing yourself about those and about why those are that way. Okay?